sometimes I still get to do a little uh, DJing. I play at some uh, some of the bars around Riga. I mean, even like I don't speak the language sometimes, but just with music and stuff, you can still communicate with the people. My name is uh, Adam Shehu. Uh, I'm a student at the RTU University, studying business informatics. And I notice how artistic people get here in Latvia. It's, I notice art, this art is pretty much a, a big deal around here. So it's easy for me to mingle with people, you know, in spite language. Uh, hip hop and house music, yeah. Uh, these are genres that I was pretty much uh, raised with, you know. I used to listen to all that uh, music like that when I was a kid. And um, yeah, so it was easy for me to, to meet people that were in that same scene and other DJ friends so far. So. Uh, like sometimes when I'm playing, a friend would just call me like, hey, I have a gig, uh, we could play together. And we would just play. I have one uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, DJ Belinda. She's played here and she's pretty experienced. She's been playing for a while. And uh, if she has a gig, she would just call me over and say, hey, we could play and we'll play together. And that way I, I started meeting other DJs as well. And you know, when they just meet me, we talk about music and stuff, and they're like, hey man, why don't you come play next week? Stuff like that. Marivo. We did it very well against Caramba, but it's not time for we think we are better than anybody because we are not. We need to work hard and every day we prove ourselves. Football wins in the field. I saw small teams won big teams already. Costa Rica won Italy, Costa Rica won Uruguay, England. I saw Germany win Brazil. <laughs> Small teams can win big teams. It's a very, very interesting game. And it's all about respect. If you don't respect your pretenics, opponent, if you don't respect opponent, football don't respect you. I'm living five years here in Latvia. And uh, we are building a project with football clubs. I come to Latvia by a dream, actually. I had a dream I was in a cold place. And uh, as a Christian, uh, I believe that cold, uh, it was uh, God's calling Portugal this cold place. When I saw Latvia in the Euro Cup, I, I felt something in my heart, something different. And from that, I start to search more about Latvia. Go, go, so for five years, from 2005 to 2010, I feel in my heart to come to Latvia. I discovered some things about me and Latvia. We had some connections. Bravo. In 2010, I met my wife. She's Latvia. She was working car wash in a social project. So we get in touch, we be connected, and uh, in 2010 I come to Latvia and we get married here. We, we first uh, f focus in uh, this connection between Brazil and Latvia. So we try to bring uh, Brazilian players and uh, for to make this mixing with Latvian players. So it's very interesting because we can see from the Latvian side uh, develop of the skills of Latvian players because they see the Brazilians doing some tricks and they try to do as well. And so we can see that developing by the skills. As well, uh, some another Latvians who never had touch with uh, uh, people from other countries or not so connected, so they can know another culture, a uh, very, very loud culture, <laughs> screaming culture, funny culture, which we are very happy. So that as well, we can see in the face of the players, they are joking more, they are smiling more, they are more communicate because uh, a lot of our players come here very quiet and after some time they speak a lot, they scream a lot, they laugh a lot. Football for us is like um, our identity, you know. 
uh, sometimes when you ask somebody, you met some Brazilian, you ask, hey, what's your name? Where are you from? What the club you support? Is some of these questions, you know? But we have a social issue on this because our social conditions are bad. Uh, for you go away from the poor condition, I'm not saying poor condition like in Bolderai or Caruosta in Leapaya, no, I'm saying very bad condition. Just uh, or football or criminal. Our goal is for some years we have a football academy just with those kids, with kids in social risk, which they are or in orphanages, in Bernunams, or they are in the day centers. So you have several cases like Cafu, which was captain of Brazil in 2002, and he played 94, 98 as well, World Cup. And he was from these slums, which we call favelas. So he could go away from the poorest condition to the rich condition by the football. в Оренбурге, и в этом городе у нас не было ни одного органа. И а, первый, уже только электронный орган появился в прошлом году. Вот. И когда я слушала а, запись, а, музыку на уроках музыкальной школы, а, то нас как бы поражало величие и как бы, вот, звучание. Тогда нам педагог рассказал о том, что на органе играют руками и ногами, но они сказали, каким способом она играет ногами. Я думала, что играет также пальцами. Собственно говоря, впервые орган живой я увидела, когда мне было 16 или 17 лет, когда я поехала в Челябинск на конкурс пианистов. И я пошла в, в, там, в собор, и, где установлен орган немецкой фирмы. И вот это было первое мое впечатление от живого органа. Но большинство концертов и, как бы, я думаю, вот раскрытие меня именно как органистки все-таки произошло здесь, когда я приехала сюда и а, получила возможность играть гораздо больше, потому что, а, скажем так, на квадратный метр а, органистов здесь меньше, чем в России. В Москве органистов может быть такое же количество, как и в Латвии, во всей Латвии, вот, но инструментов гораздо меньше. Мы не имеем юридического лица, то есть это все на благотворительной основе, и также органисты тоже выступают на благотворительной основе. То есть как бы это не заработок, это скорее как получается для души, для профессионального роста. Вот. А именно заработок идет вот именно от концертной деятельности, которую я веду здесь, в Латвии, это вот в Домском соборе, когда меня приглашают ассистировать. И это мои гастроли, пока в основном в России, конечно. То есть основной заработок все равно как бы остался в России, потому что вот я приду там гонорары выше платят, чем здесь. Но мы познакомились в Москве, он долгое время жил в Москве, работал, но потом мы поняли, что ну, с каждым годом все тяжелее и тяжелее жить становилось в Москве, это очень большой мегаполис, и мы захотели пожить в Латвии. Тем более, как бы я понимала, что Латвия это всегда была органной мекой для органистов, то есть это одно из мест в то есть Домский собор, например, это где мечтает играть каждый органист. Органная культура очень сильно отличается в России и в Латвии. Особенно в советское время очень много было разрушено инструментов, уничтожено. И для многих все равно как бы орган носил сакральный смысл. И приходили на концерты, чтобы как-то вот пообщаться с Богом то здесь, в Латвии, несмотря на то, что тоже присутствовала советская власть, все-таки инструменты почти все сохранились. Может быть, на них не так много играли, как сейчас, но тем не менее, и орган здесь все-таки больше, больше религиозный, больше сакральный инструмент. 
В России почти все органы установлены в филармониях, в концертных залах. I think Riga is pretty small. At first, I mean, I hardly ever get lost. I mean, you meet, you go out every day, and I pretty much see uh, this. I see someone I know like every single day I go out. So, but I think it's it's kind of a good thing. Like, you know, it gives. I think it kind of draws people closer. Yeah, but it's definitely small. I study. I still do a little. Uh, freelance uh, graphic design and stuff. Thanks to the fast internet, I'm able to still work online with people uh, from overseas, people in Africa, Asia. And I've noticed a lot of young uh, Latvians are really into uh, leaving, just moving and working elsewhere. And, and here I am moving into Latvia. That's, you know, that's interesting, but yeah. I remember Googling like uh, Africans in Latvia, what, what it's like, and there's, there wasn't, there wasn't really much <laughs> to find. Blending in is essential, I think, anywhere you go. That's why, like, I'm learning, like, some people are like, hey, why are you learning Latvian? Like, hey, don't, uh, you, uh, you don't even speak it in anywhere else or whatever. And I'm like, hey, man, but I'm, I'm here for now, you know? I mean, you never know when I might need it. And it's like, I reported the missing one of them, and he was like, yeah, well, you know what, hey, um, yeah, this is Latvia, man. Uh, uh, people don't really get robbed, stuff just gets missing. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, that's okay. That's good to know. Because, I mean, that was like a pretty reliable source from a guy that works at the police station, you know? Like, okay, that's, that's pretty good to know because I was really, I didn't know what to expect, you know? So I was calling my, by my university and they said, uh, hey, they have my wallet. Apparently some lady found it uh, that in the same uh, trolley 15, and uh, I was called to come pick up the wallet. It had all my cards, my money. <laughs> I was like, wow. And I called, I remember I, she dropped her number and I called her to like, say thanks and stuff. But she was like, oh, she couldn't speak English. She's like, hey, whatever. And I, I sent her an SMS like, thanks. Yeah, that was, was, that was pretty interesting. That was a, that was a good uh, first impression because that, that happened on my first week pretty much, and that just took a lot of the tension off. Coming here was such a big deal because um, there was no Latvian embassy anywhere close by. Uh, apparently there's only, there was just one in Beijing, one in Istanbul, and one in Egypt. And I had to go to China just to, to get the whole thing done. I was, I was working with a Singaporean company and uh, my mom was actually sick and she was taken to a hospital in China. I had to go see her at the hospital in China. At the same time, I had to go to the Latvian embassy for the interview. So the timing was kind of, it was pretty much the same week. So uh, I went there and I had to go see her at the hospital at the same time, and she was like, oh, yeah, okay, you're going to Latvia, this and that. But then, well, unfortunately, she passed away around that same period. And uh, we pretty much had to uh, fly her corpse all the way back to Africa, like, quit my job and went home. And then came back again to get the passport. And then went, before I went to Malaysia, and just to get everything sorted. And I flew here, it was pretty hectic. I think it's really important in life to just get all kinds of experiences. Because 
life is short. in general here in Latvia is really nice. I, I, I think if you want to see, it, I can say, in Brazil, we because we are colonized for so many countries, we, we come in here, we see so many traditions for everything, from wedding, from the, the parties, and from the sauna. And I think that is something put so much bonus from the future, like you have a kind of roots. Our self-example, Thiago, my self-example, are coming from Italian roots, and we come in very strong in uh, Catholic traditions, and we're doing things like in Italy, like we're doing wine, we're doing pinga, because the kind of schnabe from Brazil. And uh, we have it very straight about this Italian culture in our colony, let's say like that. And then we sit in a place where another one, the parents was German, the another one Italian, the another one Japanese, and it's more African. The Brazilian food with the Latvian food is not so distant. It's not like it. all the parts we have done, now, all the part at the moment, the Latvians trying our food. They, they is, is recognizing a type of dishes they, they can eat, they like. They just don't understand maybe some things, like example, you put a banana with a feijão, example. It's a bit strange. Or maybe rice with fricato pele, with fries. It's a bit strange for them. And we also enjoy some types of Latvian food too. We are too much emotional. So as well, football is something which makes Brazil proud. For example, you can go to Brazil, kids are playing football. They go to the football school. After the football school, they play football. And after this, they play football in the street. And then before sleep, they play football in the video game. So here in Latvia, the kids go to school, play the football in the, 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 the soccer school or in Meta or Supernova, whatever. And they go home and Finish. Once a week we come here. Sometimes we they have some some another activities like watch ice hockey games. So we we go to as well to, to support the the games or they go to another activities in the beach. So when it's summer, so we go as well support day as well. So we we try to help uh, how we can. Satieka vīriešu kārtas pārstāvi, viņiem ir kāds cilvēks, kam līdzināties, pēc kā tiekties. Un uh, šobrīd ir tā, ka mums ir izveidojušas ļoti labas attiecības kopā ar Tiago un bērniem pašiem. Um, kopā pavad ļoti labu laiku, uh, viņi mācās komandā kopā strādāt, viņi mācās sadarboties, viņi mācās viens otru cienīt. Tas ir sociāli nelabēlīgām un riska ģimenēm jā, dažāda veida problēmām. I think everything in the world is a cycle and is a system. So if they understand the game of football as a system, a collective system, they can understand uh, as well the, the, their life uh, as, a, as a spiritual life and then uh, daily life as a system as well. So they have a friends which they need to, to help for to be in the uh, to make the goal, they need to attack, sometimes they need to defend. So it's the same in their the daily life and the same in the real life. Little by little we can make this connection with spiritual life, daily life and the football. We are Brazilians, we are not uh, Latvians, but our goal is to be show for people we are proud of Latvia. We are proud to be here. And I'm very proud when we have the opportunity to sing the national anthem of Latvia. A lot of people are not singing around me, but I'm very proud to sing it. And when I have Brazilian anthem as well, I'm very proud to sing my our anthem. So I think people should be more proud of this country, of this language, which is very hard. And I'm doing all Brazilians which are here, which I know they are very working hard for to learn Latvian. So I think people should be more proud of this country because it's very beautiful and very special for sure. То есть, в принципе, когда организм занимается ночью, немножко страшновато. Даже не когда это совсем ночь, а когда это а, просто темно. И эти вот, слышите, да, это все шумит, это все разговаривает. И всегда кажется, а один ли ты в церкви? Вот называется мануал. А в Томском соборе четыре мануала. То есть вот так вот друг на другом находятся 
мануалы. Когда мы играем, то есть мы играем то на одном, то на втором. И иногда, конечно, не очень эстетично выглядим, когда мы так задраны. Этот проект детский, как бы экскурсия, лекция, концерт, предложил один из слушателей постоянных. То есть меня запросил организовать концерт детский, в котором бы я рассказала об органе, показала регистры. 13 трек. 13 трек. Ну, взял, взял. Взял? Да, да, да. Тогда мы начнем с него. Мы можем... Нет, Нет это мы поставим в конце, да? В середине. Мы продолжим музыкальную тему. Совсем скоро, буквально через 5 минут, мы встречаемся с Еленой Приваловой Эпштейн и продолжим разговоры о старинной музыке и об органе, и о тех музыкантах, которые писали музыку для органа. И вся музыка Ганна Себастьяна Баха, она сплошь полифонична. Это когда один голос накладывается на другой. То есть потом уже Феликс Мендельсон в основном использовал гомофонно гармонический склад в музыке. Это когда мелодия и аккомпанемент. А полифония — это когда все голоса равноправны. Авраам Мендельсон воспитывался в, в, в очень музыкальной семье. Мама, как я уже сказала, была училась у ученика Баха, бабушки. Да? И а дедушка Мендельсона был известным философом. Все старое. Трубы дивы. А какого года? 1701. Ну да, да, да. Самый старый играющий у нас. Мамочка его и тут. Вот этот уникальный, эта флеточка. Ну такой вы вообще нигде в мире не найдете, ну. Деревянная флеточка. Это не до конца, да? То есть она вот так открыта. Все уже открыта. В каждом инструменте себя иначе чувствуешь, иначе. То есть это начиная от эмоциональных переживаний, оканчивая физически. Я ребенком любил большие, медом пахнущие луга, перелески, Травы сухие и меж трав пычачьи рога. Каждый пыльный куст придорожный мне кричал, «Я шучу с тобой, обойди меня осторожно и узнаешь, кто я такой». Только дикий ветер осенний, прошумев, прекращал игру. Сердце билось еще блаженней, и я верил, что я умру. Something in this strange world that goes on and on. As the years go by and time fades away, what used to be good days are now filled with dismay. Tomorrow comes and then it goes, and my ambition to become something grows and grows. Passo agora a mostrar-lhes um caminho ainda mais excelente. Ainda que eu fale a língua dos homens e dos anjos, se não tiver amor, serei como o sino que ressoa ou como o prato que retine. Ainda que eu tenha o dom de profecia e saiba todos os mistérios, todo o conhecimento e tenha uma fé capaz de mover montanhas, se não tiver amor, nada serei. Ainda que eu dê aos pobres tudo o que eu possuo e entregue o meu corpo para ser queimado, se não tiver amor, nada disso valerá. O amor é paciente, é bondoso, não inveja, não se vangloria, não se orgulha, não maltrata, não procura seus interesses, não se ira facilmente, não guarda rancor. <risos> 